I'm Shanice Henry, editor of Farmer IQ. I'm here on site at Disposable Solutions for Biomanufacturing 2017 conference. I'm here to find out about a few of the burning topics that the industry is facing, and I spoke to a few thought leaders to find out more. The content of the session today, I mean, it was really looking at the different organizations that are out there in the market, um, so the, the different standards, the different uh, regulatory type uh, requirements, and so um, I think overall it was really well received today as far as the content that was, was provided to the audience. Um, I think there was a lot of interest in the standardization process and how it can benefit end users. So I, I, yeah, I thought it was a very good session today and I think people really enjoyed the content that was produced. So I spoke on uh, the United States Pharmacopeia or USP's uh, uh, point of view of what we're doing to uh, deal with uh, single use systems uh, in our documentation. And really it was to tell the audience where we are from the point of view of developing a standard which you will go into the United States Pharmacopeia. Uh, and where we are is that we've written a draft uh, on this. It's been out for public review, public comment, it's come back in again. And uh, there were significant comments, which is good, and so we have now rewritten it uh, via our expert panel. And the expert panel has both uh, members of the USP Packaging and Distribution Expert Committee, but then also from uh, interested organizations like BPSA and BPOG uh, to help us align as best we can uh, uh, with these other organizations. The other advantage we have absolutely is we have representation from the Food and Drug Administration, both on our top committee and for these individual expert panel. So uh, we're moving along uh, and I can tell you that uh, we will publish uh, the revised chapter and the number will be 665 uh, on May the 1st in the Pharmacopeia Forum which is our, our uh, official publication in the United States Pharmacopeia. And also coupled with it is an explanation chapter above 1000, 1665 which gives you background and much more detail of how you should use the chapter below 1000. It'll go out for comment again. Uh, for three months, uh, globally around the world, anybody can comment. And then we will finalize and we hope to have it in the USP as a, as a uh, legal chapter in 2018. So, I mean, it's a process update really, but we are going forward, we are moving forward, you know, together with other organizations. I won't say it's total alignment, but, you know, honestly, we're doing the best that we can. So certainly, you know, is always a hot topic, and some people say it's it's being uh, a little bit over over talked about these days. And um, but there's a lot of good guidance going on. I think there's some good balance that that's being looked at across the industry between the extractable protocols that are out there, and I think those are really helping drive the the industry towards um, better adoption of single-use systems. E&L, uh, shortens it down a bit, uh, is very popular. A lot of folks s still have problems with it. Uh, and we understand that. Uh, about two years ago, we published uh, the final versions in the United States Pharmacopeia of two chapters, 1663, which was on extractables from drug products, and 1664, which was on the leachables. So these are guidance above a thousand chapters are to guide the end user to understanding. They uh, are not being revised at the moment. Uh, they seem to be fine, but what we've done in the USP is to use the basis of those chapters and the concepts to drill down to revise our other chapters of uh, plastic materials, uh, elastomers, and now glass. Uh, and so this is sort of, that's why it's taking several years uh, to do so. And to be candid, some of our chapters really haven't been revised for 20 odd years. And the plastics ones was one of those. It was the, the one we felt we should start on because it was the one uh, 
in most need, shall we say, of, of revision. So we started there. And, and again, it's a continuum, really, of revising and adding new uh, materials in. So e l yes, remains a big topic for all our container closure systems uh, and the materials of construction and providing guys, uh, uh, guidance and, and guidance uh, to folks to be able to do this correctly so that the regulatory authorities, whether it's in uh, the EU or, or in America, the Food and Drug Administration, uh, are able to you know, accept what, what is being given. Um, it's not an easy topic, but I will say. But, I mean, eventually it's quite clear that people are, are beginning to get the, the concepts and being able to use this uh, in the US and also I teach uh, for the USP, for example, in India. And it's in the last few years, it's quite clear that the Indian uh, pharmaceutical uh, uh, companies have taken this to heart because they want to export to the US and Europe. And so they, they need to know about E&L and, L and uh, they're coming along by leaps and bounds. Well, it's a very diverse array of talks you can uh, listen to and you, you, it's very hard to find anywhere else uh, people from all kinds uh, that bring together all kinds of perspectives to the, to the table. So all along the supply chain you get uh, analytical viewpoint, uh, manufacturing viewpoint, engineering and so on. It's a very terrific mixture of, of talks and opportunities uh, to network. It's a great opportunity for me to do some kind of benchmark to understand what others and users are doing, to compare and to understand what are the development in single use. Also, it's a great opportunity to understand from a regulatory standpoint how the situation is evolving and also to liaise with suppliers so that we, we can better discuss together, understand each other and work together to improve our or single-use systems. The manufacturers get to hear firsthand uh, from industry experts and end-user um, folks as to exactly the kind of challenges that they're facing. And this allows us to improve our designs and to provide uh, custom solutions or integrated solutions for those challenges. It's been a great couple of days here at Disposable Solutions for Biomanufacturing 2017 here based in Munich and we've had some great insights from industry thought leaders. If you'd like to know more go to pharmaiq.com.